Major developments in the Trayvon Martin case today. George Zimmerman's lawyers called a press conference to say they don't know where he is and they quit. Also, a Florida special prosecutor says a grand jury will not hear the case. Instead, she will decide if charges will be brought against George Zimmerman. NBC's Carrie Sanders has more. George Zimmerman's legal team walked to the podium and then announced they're no longer his lawyers. At this point, we're, we're withdrawing his counsel. If he wants us to come back as counsel, he will contact us. Two attorneys say they had never met their client, George Zimmerman, but they say they had an open line of communication with him via email, text, and phone. But on Sunday, but, uh, the two say the there was inexplicable silence. And it's been like that Today. since. And contrary to their advice, they say Zimmerman reached out to the special prosecutor, Angela Corey. One of the things every defense attorney tells his client is don't talk to the prosecutors, don't talk to the cops, frankly, don't talk to anybody. The day they lost contact with Zimmerman, Sunday, is the same day the Internet Registry shows George Zimmerman set up this website. While his lawyers say they thought he was exercising his right to remain silent, he found a way to speak out. On his welcome page, Zimmerman writes in part, I was involved in a life-altering event, which led me to become a subject of media coverage. I've been forced to leave my home, my school, my employer, my family, and ultimately my entire life. And there's a link to donate. Funds, he says, that are only for living expenses and legal defense. Our concern is that for him to do this, when he's got a couple of professionals out there working as hard as we were for his benefit, to handle it this way suggests that he may not be in complete control of what's going on. We're concerned for his emotional and physical safety. Trayvon Martin's family. It takes a lot of patience uh, with dealing with this. And their lawyers tell NBC News they're stunned and fear George Zimmerman could be a flight risk if the special prosecutor chooses to bring charges. Will he ever be brought to justice if and when he is charged for killing their son? That was Carrie Sanders reporting, and the jury is set in the trial of William Balfour, the man accused of killing Jennifer Hudson's family. A retired CTA dispatcher, a former Jesse White tumbler, and a FedEx courier are among the jurors chosen today to compete to complete rather the 12-member jury and six alternates. The trial is expected to begin April 23rd. Former Cook County State's Attorney Thomas Glasgow joins us now. The Trayvon Martin case, um, this is one of those where, you know, we're still waiting to hear whether or not there's charges. But the real interesting thing about this one, I mean, there's been this big uproar. What kind of pressure is this special prosecutor under to bring some kind of charge? Well, there's intense political pressure because the majority of people that are looking at this are not from the state of Florida. Right. Usually, a, state, a special state's attorney has, or a special prosecutor, has the ability to just work within the framework of the state law. But now you've got people looking from the outside who don't have that same position in law to go forward and prosecute someone for what is perceived to be a violation of a national standard versus a local standard. And the interesting thing is that, I mean, he hadn't been charged before because that stand your ground statute apparently in Florida is really broad. I mean, it is. And, and I mean, could she, I mean, what could, I mean, I could see him not getting charged or do you think it'll She'll go for manslaughter. What do you think will happen if you, you know, we're looking at this yourself? Well, you have to look at the standard ground law. And in Illinois, that can never happen because you have a duty to retreat into your home and therefore you, you don't have to retreat any farther. But in the state of Florida, the standard ground rule says that if you're attacked, you can use deadly force to counter deadly force. So you're not entitled or don't have a duty to flee. In this case, the question is going to really hinge on what kind of evidence did she initially find. The troublesome fact is you got an officer who asked for a manslaughter charge with the state's attorney and wanted to actually charge Mr. Zimmerman, but it was declined. It was declined on the basis that he had a valid self-defense under the stand your ground rule. And if the evidence shows that, then there's really not a whole lot you can do with regard to state law, which is what she's charged with enforcing. So really, this, do you, what do you think? Do you think she will or won't? I'm just curious. I, I think she's probably not going to have anything that is going to bring charges at this point unless mm. there's new evidence that's discovered. I mean, we've all seen, you know, various and sundry things. We've seen the video. We've seen, does he have marks on the back of his head? Does he not have marks on the back of his head? You know, unfortunately, she's privy to a lot more than we are. Sure. And the police did a fairly thorough 
thorough investigation. The issue goes back to, you know, the famous movie line, somebody dies, somebody's going to jail. All right, let's get to the Balfour case, which is a huge case. Jennifer Hudson's family was killed. Uh, William Balfour, the ex-husband or the estranged husband right. of the sister, is accused of killing the family. They're in the middle of trying to pick a jury right now. I think they may be getting close to finished. And they've got a real a real cross-section, a real variety. What What is each side kind of going for? We went into this yesterday a little bit, but curious what your take is on what they're going for. I, that's a very good question because as prosecutors and defense attorneys, we, you know, we always say that picking the jury and those opening statements are the most important part of the case. The evidence falls in the line. We know what the evidence is going to be. It's how we shade the evidence that comes out. The prosecutor is going to look for people who, you know, really are sympathetic to Jennifer Hudson or sympathetic to the area where she lives in and know something about the case. But as you recall, there were some people that were on the jury that didn't know anything about the case and claimed to not have any knowledge or recollection of how this occurred or played out. The defense is really going to be looking at those people. Now, whether or not they're more educated or non-educated people really hinges on whether or not there's scientific evidence involved. And in this case, there isn't. A prosecutor's one going to want common sense, you know, people with, you know, just generalized jobs, not real specialized jobs that don't overthink things. Mm. Whereas the defense are going to want more critical people who are going to say, well, that could happen. I'm going to go ahead and really think this out. That's really the strategy that you're going to use with regard to this. And what is, how does celebrity play? Celebrity plays case? huge. I mean, you know, she's going to be in that case, in that trial, every single day. The fact that there is celebrity in the audience and seeing this going on every day heightens that responsibility for the jurors and means that they have even a greater pressure to make sure that not only society as a whole, but to make sure that their view, their verdict is not critiqued as to what they did and why they made their decision. And that, well, that happens anyway, but you're right, there's more scrutiny, no question, when there's Absolutely. celebrity involved. Thanks so much, Tom. Always good to talk to you. It's a pleasure to you see you. You always have a great well. perspective. Appreciate it. Well, there is another high-profile case.